An emotion is a response to values. It is an automatic psychological result of a man's value judgments. An emotion involves both a mental and a physical component. An emotion is the psychosomatic form in which man experiences his estimate of the beneficial or harmful relationship of some aspect of reality to himself. Not all of men's values are held in identified verbal form. Men can hold many things as values without conscious recognition and in defiance of conscious convictions to the contrary. Many of the values men select are clearly self-defeating and contradictory. But whether men hold their values consciously or subconsciously, rationally or irrationally, it is their concept of what is good for them or evil, what is for them or against them, that determines what they will love and what they will fear. Just as love is man's emotional response to that which represents his values, so fear is his response to that which threatens those values. Just as desire is the consequence of love, man's wish to achieve and possess that which he holds as his good, so hatred is the consequence of fear, his wish for the destruction of that which endangers his good. Just as happiness is the consequence of fulfilled desire, the emotion in man which results from the achievement of his values, so suffering is the emotion which results from the frustration or destruction of those values. An emotion is a response to some aspect of existence, to an object or event perceived in reality or perceived within one's consciousness. One can feel the emotion of love in answer to the sight of a person whom one values or in answer to that person's image within one's mind. One can feel fear at the experience of a physical pain signaling danger or at the anticipation of that pain within one's thoughts. One can feel guilt over an irrationality actually committed or over the desire for that irrationality. An emotion is a reaction to a perception, but the specific emotion one experiences is not determined merely by the nature of the object or event perceived. It is determined by one's evaluation of that object or event. For instance, three men may look at the same woman. The first man sees in her his own deepest values and feels love. The second man is blind or indifferent to her virtues and feels nothing. The third man regards her virtues as a reproach and feels resentment. Or three men may look at a scoundrel. The first man recognizes to what extent this person has betrayed his status as a human being and feels contempt. The second man wonders how he can be safe in a world where such scoundrels can prosper and feels fear. The third man secretly envies the scoundrel's success and feels a sneaking admiration. All three men perceived the same objects. The difference in their reactions came from the difference in their appraisals of the significance of what they perceived. An emotional response is always the reflection and product of an estimate, and an estimate is the product of an individual's values as the individual understands them to apply to a given situation. Differences in men's values come from differences in their basic premises, in their fundamental views of themselves, of other men, of existence. Consider the process of emotional reactions on a simple example. Suppose that you work in an office and the news gets around that the company is laying people off. You have not accumulated any savings, jobs are hard to find, and several of your associates have already been laid off. Suddenly you get a note stating that the boss wants to see you at four o'clock. Your emotional reaction is one of apprehension, anxiety, fear, at the prospect of losing your job. Then you walk into the boss's office and the boss says, Jones, I've been watching you for a long time. You're a good man. I'm very pleased with your work. So I'm going to give you a promotion and a raise. Your emotion changes instantly. You feel relieved, pleased, elated. The causes of your emotional reactions in this case are obvious. And if your co-workers knew the circumstances and had seen you look depressed when you went into the boss's office and look happy when you came out, no one among them would say, 
I wonder where emotions come from. Emotions are such mysterious things. Consider another example. Suppose that the door of this room suddenly flew open and a man burst in brandishing a machine gun. It is safe to assume that all of us would experience an immediate emotional reaction and that the emotion would be fear. It would happen so fast that one would experience it as if the reaction were automatic and as if no thought, no estimate, no knowledge were involved on one's part. But suppose that a two-year-old child were present in this room. He would not feel any fear at all. He might even giggle and want to play with the machine gun. Or if a savage were present who had never seen a gun before and did not know what it was, he would not feel the fear. He would have no estimate of the meaning of the gun. He would not know that it represented a threat to him. An emotion as such is involuntary. It follows an estimate automatically as an immediate consequence. Through the filing in the subconscious of past experiences, identifications, and values, a mind is set to register certain kinds of estimates in the face of certain kinds of situations without requiring the initiation of a fresh conscious process of thought. It is the speed with which emotions can occur that permits man to fail to grasp that their source is his mind, meaning more specifically his value premises. The process of automatic appraisal is made possible by the mind's accumulated premises that function as an integrated unit and sum up immediate involuntary estimates until and unless a new thought intervenes to revoke the order in answer to the mind's recognition that its old thinking is not sufficient to evaluate that which now confronts it. For example, a man who is in love with his wife will feel an emotion of love for her when he sees her or thinks of her, and that emotion will be automatic. He will not have to remind himself of his estimate of her character, of the virtues which he had observed and which were the cause of his estimate. But let him discover that she is deceiving him, that she is unfaithful, that she has none of the qualities he admired, and his estimate of her character will change. His new evaluation of her will automatically revoke the evaluation he had given to his subconscious, and his emotion will change. Instead of love, he will now feel hatred, or anger, or contempt, or pity, according to whatever standard of values he uses to judge her actions. At any given moment, a man's emotions are the automatic summation of the thinking he has done or has failed to do in the past. They are the product of the values and estimates he has established in his mind on a conscious and subconscious level. An estimate can be revoked and an emotion can be changed, but only by a new process of thought. It is man's capacity to hold contradictory values and thus to make contradictory estimates that permits him to experience contradictory or ambivalent emotions to fear that which he desires, to suffer guilt over that which brings him pleasure, to resent that which he loves. But it is still from his values that his every emotion proceeds. It is man's capacity to evade his contradictions and refuse to identify his values that permits him to complain that he possesses feelings and desires for which he cannot account, and to cry that the source of his feelings is not his mind, but his instincts, his primitive urges, his archaic drives, just as centuries ago men sought to explain those impulses which they feared, condemned, but could not understand by the doctrine that human beings are inhabited by demons. For instance, an aesthete finds himself helplessly attracted to a brainless slut he professes to despise, and, evading the knowledge that he is indifferent to or frightened by, any woman of mental stature, dreading the admission that what he seeks is proof of his masculinity and that by his standards only a slut can give it to him, wishing never to know that that slut is the soul mate of his deepest values, of his secret self. He cries that his body is an instinct-ridden machine moved by desires unrelated to the content of his mind and evades the question of why his instincts made that sexual choice for him and no other.